what it's zero interest in this yes zero percent interest money it's out there so tell us like how does this work What is going on, Derosa Insiders? This is Matt Faircloth, and welcome to the Cashflow Digest Show. This is a show dedicated to the thing that I think is the most important in real estate investing, and that is cash flow. My name is Matt Faircloth. I'm the host of the Cashflow Digest, along with the Derosa team here at our awesome company, the Derosa Group. If you guys want to hear more about what we do, go to DerosaGroup.com to hear more about what we do, including awesome passive investing options that produce that funky thing that I just talked about called cash flow. If you guys are watching this program on Spotify, thank you. This is a fully broadcast podcast on Spotify. Spotify. Lots of folks are downloading. It's doing really well there. So if you guys are joining us on Spotify, thank you. Please do me a favor and like the show, write it a review, give it a five star on Spotify. We'd love to have your support there. The way that you're watching this program live, the way you can ask questions of our guests, questions of our guests, excuse me, the way you can ask me questions, the way you can pick our brain, do whatever you want to do here live on the show is by going to Facebook forward slash DeRosa, our company name, Insiders. DeRosa Insiders. Join that private community. It is free. All right, guys, here's uh, what I want to intro here, right? There is a phenomenal, there's more of a need today than I think there ever has been for liquidity, the ability to have cash and to put that cash to work in your real estate investing business. This was a need that I had many, many years ago when the market was different too. The market was a little soft and changing when I used this vehicle back then. And this is something that's coming up more and more now. People think, well, I don't either need to get cash from an investor or I need to get cash by earning it somewhere else. Well, what if you could borrow a lot of money against your own personal credit at pretty much 0% interest, right? So we're going to talk today about a phenomenon that you guys have access to right now that we all do. We, you guys all have access to right now. You might not be utilizing and that is the ability to borrow against your own personal credit to take money to put to work into your business. So to talk to us about that is an expert in the industry. And I'd like to say a good friend of mine, Eric Moss. What's up, Eric? How are you today? How are you doing? Thanks for having me, man. Appreciate yeah. it. You're welcome, man. Great. I met you in my early real estate investing years, right? It's, it's much longer. It's right. It's probably yeah. 15, 16 years. Tell me where you were then and, and that, and we can talk a little bit of memory lane on how you and I met and played cash flow together back in the day. And we can talk into, into the exciting topic of, uh, of, of borrowing against credit to, for, to grow real estate portfolios. Love it. Yeah. So, I mean, man, back in 07, 08 is probably when yeah. we met. And yeah. I mean, I was, I was a full-time engineer for DuPont doing project management work, but I was also a, an investor, had been investing since about 2002. And you and I met at, at our local RIA. And I still remember, I always tell the story, you know, now that you're all famous and I see you on all these on podcasts and, and killing it. I saw you with Pace the other day. I love it. I, uh, I always tell the story of how we used to play the cash flow game, not only at networking events, but in my dining room, I, I yeah. remember sitting around the table, there was eight of us just sitting there playing, playing the cash flow game and learning, learning how to, how to, build wealth and create as much cash flow as we could for long-term success. And yeah, and, and I was in, I was with DuPont doing the management or the engineering work for a few years after that. Yeah, absolutely. So just a few things to, to highlight there. Networking is important and it's important to do it face-to-face, -face, right? And then that's, so I, I believe that those of you guys that are watching that are looking to exponentially grow your business, you got to get out to your local real estate club. You got to get out there and meet people and press the flesh and meet people because if real estate investing is not a get in, get out, make lots of money and then go retire and live on the beach in Cabo. And, and you still got to network. You still got to run a business. I actually have a friend that is, is making enough cash flow that he can live on the beach in Cabo, but guess what? He's got an internet connection and he's on Zoom calls a lot on the beach in Cabo. So even if you do that, you're still going to be working, right? So real estate investing is the long game. And the reason why uh, I want you guys to really take in that you want to play the long game is the people you meet now, maybe people like Eric and I uh, are, or the people that you stay in contact with and you stay in touch with as they grow their business, you grow yours, you may end up utilizing them or at least referring people to them or whatever. It is a long game business. It is a business that you want to make friends in and then take care of them long term because those taking care of people come back. And I commend myself to that. And I also commend Eric to that because I know a lot of people that work with Eric and his company. And Eric is one just like I am to never burn a bridge. And at the end of the day, the more, the more people you help, the wealthier you get. You know, that's number one. And number two, a highlight there, guys, is the board game cash flow came up with by Robert Kiyosaki is what Eric's talking about. That game still is relevant in today's marketplace. And it's been over when I first was introduced to it, it was about 20 years ago and it was relevant then. And I learned, Eric, one of some of the first principles of raising capital, I learned in that game, right? 20 yep. years ago, because I was the mechanic, which is a low income earner, but with low expenses. And a buddy of mine sitting across from me is the doctor. That buddy could have been you, right? Back in the day, right? They drew the doctor card, which is higher income, high expenses. Kind of sounds like real life, right? It's hard. Um, it's hard yeah. to get out of the rat race with that. 
Yeah. Right. The doctor's the hard. The doctor makes the most money, but it's very hard to get out of the rat race. The mechanic is the easiest to get out of the rat race because their expense burden is very low. Right. But what I learned as the mechanic to do was to go to the doctor and say, Hey, I can't afford these big deal cards. Right. These deal cards start at 500 at $5,000. I only have like two grand in my name as the mechanic. Right. But how about what if I go and land on a big deal card? Right. And doctor, I want you to go and take out a loan and partner with me on the deal because the doctor had enough earned income that they could borrow like a hundred grand, right? It was a little hack to the game. And so what we figured out to do is I would go 50, 50 split with the doctor and we would go and buy that 24 unit apartment building card in the big deal card in the deck. Right. And that was the, the that was raising private capital one-on-one it's going to folks that don't have the time or the means or the introductions or whatever it is into the marketplace and striking a deal with them to partner with you. And, and that's, and so I recommend all you guys to go get a copy of the cash flow board game. It's all over the place and play it. There's even cash flow one-on-one and two Oh two. Right. And cash flow 202 is crazy. There's all kinds of different twists and turns in that game, but Stop lots of lessons, right, Eric? All the fun stuff. Yeah. I mean, look, it, it, yeah. I've always had the creative mindset around, around, you know, getting the deal done and, and especially on the financing side, but cash flow, man, you got to get creative. The cash flow game, you want to get creative. You can, like you said, you can borrow from the doctor or sell a deal to a doctor and wholesale it the same way yeah. that you could. And, and look, the there are, there's some rules, but like, if you think outside the box, just like we're taught as investors and entrepreneurs, yeah. it's, it can be a really fun game. And like you said, learn, yeah. learn a lot from, I took a well, lot it's of funny, Eric, in the game, people would say things like, well, you can't do that. You can't partner with him. You know, uh, you can't split up the equity or you can't borrow money from another player. Guess what guys, it didn't say it in the rules. And I think that Robert intentionally did not put things like that in the rules one way or another. This is what encourage you to say like, Hey, you guys can do equity deals with each other. You guys can lend money to each other. That's how you do this. He kind of wanted to make it. And I think I, but my, my thought was Robert's intention was to make it an open forum. It's kind of figure it out and not for nothing. The reason why we, we play games like that is to have a little bit of a schoolroom to try on things that we want to try on in life. And so you can either be a, you can't do that. The rules say you can't, or how can I, how can I figure this out? How can I make this work? Right. And I've had people in real life tell me, well, you can't do equity deals with investors without being a large institutional bank, or you can't do a lot of the things that you talk about in your book, raising private capital. Right. But guess what I did. And a lot of people do, and you can either be a, you can't, or how, or how can I, which one are you? Right. Yeah. I mean, look, the first, the first deal I ever bought, still going to college, still at Drexel university. Um, I did nothing illegal. I was, I got, I used excess student loan funds to fund the down payment on my first deal with two other partners. Awesome. I was going to live on campus, decided not to. They still sent me the, I decided not to last minute. So they still sent me the funds for the, you know, through the student loan. And that's how I leveraged and got into my first deal. And you're made, still a borrower. Made a ton of mistakes yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. learned and still made money. I yeah. love real estate. Yeah, I do too. I do too. You're still the borrower. And maybe that goes into today's conversation because it's not like it's not like you weren't the borrower when that money came in and went towards something else, you know, and, and everything like that. At the end of the day, you're still borrowing the money. I don't recommend people go get go drumming up student loans and then intentionally put all the money into real estate. But at the end of the day, if you were the borrower, it was the intention and the intention changed. I get it, right? So let's talk a little bit about what you do now, because I mentioned before that there is a, I was talking to somebody last night that I think is a good referral for you that I'm going to be introducing to you who he's, he's doing a fix and flip and he's got his bank that is going to be lending him money for the construction cost on the fix and flip. Right. But he's like, well, the problem is, is that he calls me freaking out. Like, what do I do? I was like, you call Eric Moss. That's what you do. Because here's the problem he's facing is that he needs cash to front his construction work. He needs cash to give his contractors because these contractors are smaller operations. They can't wait until his bank pays him. Right. And the yeah. bank is not going to pay him until after the work's done. For example, he wants to put in a new HVAC system and a new roof cost of about 25 grand. He has to do that work. That work has to happen. And the bank comes out and does the inspection on the property. The bank says, okay, that work was done properly. Here's your 25 grand. And I get why they do that because the bank doesn't want to go giving you money that you're going to not put to work into the property. That's their collateral. Right. So the yeah. bank, their hands are tied. They can't give you the money to you do the work. And if this guy just needs extra cash to get the work done, he wasn't sure what to do. And I said, I got a guy that can help you untap your, just take the untapped, you know, potential and your, and your personal credit and free up a lot of cash that you can use for advances like that, you know, for purposes of put into a deal and then get it out of the deal, you know, just bridge capital. And when I told him that the money that you can produce is, I think low interest or maybe even 0% interest still, like it was when I was doing deals with you, yep. it's, it's a no brainer. He's like, what? It's zero interest. And I said, yes, 0% interest money. It's out there. So tell us, like, how does this work? What are we talking about? And maybe give a few success stories on people that you've worked with on how they've been able to put the capital you produce to work and, and, you know, and, and skyrocket their business. 
Love it. Yeah. I think what you just talked about that, that example is perfect because mm-hmm. it's, it's a fix and flip, right? So it's a short-term opportunity. You're going to yep. be into the deal. Your, your plan is to sell it, whether it's in three months, six months, 12 months, mm-hmm. um, which is, you know, how you want to leverage lines of credit in general, yep. right? It's a short-term product. And then the other piece was, so, so just to, just to be clear, it sounds like that, that client of yours or friend of yours is basically they're working with a, a lender that gives them a draw after the, the work is done. So mm-hmm. they'll get a construction draw, but they got to verify and inspect that the work was done and then they'll get the money. Yeah. You get an advance to do the work. Once you become a seasoned fix and flipper and you got like a couple dozen deals under your belt. Yeah. You got that cash. You better have that cash. Every deal you do, you set aside 20% of the money, keep it in your reserves in your company, and then, you know, save some up for taxes. And then you can use the rest to put onto yourself. So you need to, you need to save up that reserve. But until you get there, until you've done a couple dozen fix and flips or burst strategy deals, you might not have that liquidity you know, AKA just dollars sitting in the bank to put out to advance. Cause it does, people don't talk about this enough. Real estate investing a lot of times requires the operator, us to advance cash that we're going to get back in, in a fix and flip or in a burr deal or in a, whatever it is, or even like if you're doing a small deal that you need to raise capital for, maybe you need to lay down the earnest money deposit and you're going to raise capital from investors. You're going to raise that money back out, but regardless of how you do it, you need to be able to have cash to plunk down here. And then it's going to, you're going to make it back and it's clear how you're going to get it back. It doesn't change the fact that you need it first before right. the banks are give it back to you or before investors are going to get it to you or whatever. And, and what yeah, we yeah. do, where we will come into play on that scenario is we would help help your friend get access to somewhere between fifty to a hundred thousand dollars. Wow, like you said, of some zero percent money in the form of unsecured revolving lines of credit that not only could he use on this particular deal for the you know the rehab costs and, and the front and even just for reserves and emergency funds, but he could use it time and time again because it's revolving. The awesome part about it. And I'm sure you know this, it doesn't report on the personal credit. So you're leveraging your strong personal credit, but it's under the business where you can go out there, you can max it out. It's not going to pull that personal credit down. And when I say max it out, right, I don't mean going to buy a, a car or yeah. a TB or a, a liability, right? We want to max it out as leverage to get into more assets, more opportunities. I always say what mm-hmm. we do is opportunity money, right? Yeah. And, and I've heard people say things like, well, geez, if I go and borrow a bunch of money against my personal credit, right? And then I go and get a mortgage on a, on a, on a Burr deal, that may disqualify me from borrowing on the Burr deal. Well, in the, and in working with Eric, you're borrowing against your LLC because you got to have an LLC doing to do this, this program with you, right? Eric, you got to have a company. So you want an EIN. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to borrow under the EIN. It could be an LLC, mm-hmm. S Corp. Yep. It could be a sole proprietorship EIN that yeah. you have set up. Yeah. Right. So it's an EIN, not your social, right? Yep. And that, so when somebody does a credit report on your social, they're not going to see it. And that enables you to borrow money for a burr deal or whatever it is you got coming down the pipeline. When we did this with you, we did a bunch of, you know, burr projects in Trenton. Um, we were able to buy a, a small portfolio of single family homes, renovate them, get them performing, refinance them, and then give the money back by the time that they, I mean, the 0% interest line, it, it's a, it's a period of time that the 0% interest is there. And then at some point it goes up to much higher, correct? Yeah, yeah, it could be six mm-hmm. to 18 months. I have one lender right now that goes up to 20 months, 0%. Mm-hmm. Long term, we're going to show you how to manage it between 5 and 9%. So it's still yeah. competitive. But let me ask you, when, when you said you were doing the BRRRR, yes. was that before the, the acronym came out? I did a lot of BRRRR deals before it had that cool name. I did, I did a house hack before it had a cool name. Before that, I just, <laughs> I, 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 I just called that letting my buddies live with me. Just having roommates. That's what that's I call what it. I always right? say, like, I use the lines of credit in the, you know, as a similar way. I would use the lines as a down payment. Yeah. With a commercial lender because there were no hard money lenders lending in 2009, 10, 11, at least right. not that I was aware of. And and then I couldn't refi right away. So my burr was a 12 month burr because I would pull private money yep. to pay back the lines of credit so that they were accessible for the next deal mm-hmm. and then go out there and, and refi it 12 months later because of the 12 yeah. month seasoning, the one year seasoning. So Brandon Turner is the best namer of things. He comes up with the coolest, <laughs> most memorable names of anything his hand touches. You know, his Instagram handles, Beardy Brandon. Perfect. Perfect. You know, right. and that's what he kept the name of Burr many, many years ago when he was when he was the host of the Big Fox podcast. So way cooler name than I would have thought of. And that's so I was doing it before it had that cool name. I, I recommend people consider programs like this for that. And, then, and like you said, at some point it comes due and that. So you got to kind of treat this money like a hot potato, right? You got to put it into a thing. Do what you do with it and get it back out just as you would hard money that's costing you 12, 13, 14, 15% or investor capital, which is probably costing you 8% plus a slice of your profit. This is money where you don't have to go give it a slice of your profit to anybody. And it's certainly a lot cheaper than hard money is. And there's no collateral on a physical piece of real estate. This is just on your personal credit. So if you've got reasonable, reasonably good credit, you can take advantage of these programs. And so many people I talk to are not tapped in to leveraging their credit properly to free up tons of money. Tons of money, hundreds of thousands of dollars that they could go putting into their business today, right now.
Yeah, and even look, even if it look, I know a lot of investors are out there leveraging personal credit in deals. So you'll your usage is up, credit may not be where it needs to be. We see that all day, every day. So we strategize for, on the credit side to to optimize, right? We're we're gonna educate you ahead of time, make sure that yep. your credit profile is in the right position to get access to as much as possible. That's why banks don't like us, because we're we're educating you ahead of time before going into the bank or going yeah. to a lender. They don't like that. They want you to be uneducated so that they can, you know, unfortunately, I say this. You know, take advantage of you a little bit. Yeah. Um, well, but, they're not good. Banks aren't offering programs like this. You know, right. banks aren't out there you know, doing zero percent interest lines of credit just backed by your personal credit score. I mean, they, they want you to go and turn in a typical loan application, collateralized real estate. Yeah, it, it's way more in their favor for you to go in and do a deal that is way less risky for them. Lots of collateral. They could ruin you with all with all the hooks they get into you and these kinds of things. And that which is why I really like what you offer because it enables an investor to bring everything they have to the table, including their personal credit. Give me like a quick success story about how someone in working with you has been able to hockey stick their business and their and what they're up to. I mean, my best success story is from a few years back, but I had a client where I had helped him and his wife get 200,000 of access between the two of them in two different LLCs. And they had a five-year goal to get out of the rat race, right? To get out of their full-time jobs. And because we were able to get them to 200K of access, right? We didn't do the deals for them. We didn't find the opportunities, but no. we got them the access that they could use over and over again. I ran into that same client at a local re event and within 18 months, he had produced more than 150K he was producing in his full-time job. Like I said, he knew what to do with the money that he got. Wow. But he was able to get out of that rat race um, in 18 months on a five-year goal. So that, to me, resonates still Crazy. to this day. I'm like, man, that's – that, when, when I'm having a tough day, like, man, dude, this, is, this is a tough business, man. I'm working yeah, with yeah. that. Like, that's what motivates me to get back. You must get, I think yeah. the bigger thing, what you just said, the reason he wanted out of his full-time job was he wanted to go – every summer to a different country with his kids. And like he invited me to the private Facebook group and they went to Australia and Costa Rica. And um, now they, they live in Florida and they do all homeschooling. It's like, it's pretty neat. It's pretty neat. They're living um, life on their own terms. Yeah. And that's what, that's what real estate investing can generate. Maybe not overnight, you know, but maybe faster than you think it is by putting money to work, doing the right deals and everything like that. That is so awesome, man. You didn't do it for them, right? You just gave them away. And they, what you give them a door, they walk through that door and they were able to take ownership of their own destiny and look at them now. Right. Yeah. Give them an extra tool in the toolbox. I mean, as yeah. investors, we need to surround ourselves with all yeah. the tools, private money, hard money. Um, yeah. Own and this, this right. Just, this, these lines of credit are just another, another tool in the toolbox. Regardless of what it is, regardless of what it is, there is no one solution that's going to solve the financial independence puzzle for you. But what you need to have is enough pieces on the board, like joining a mastermind group, such as the DeRosa Insiders Program or the DeRosa Accelerator Program or the Bigger Pockets Bootcamp that we teach. Whatever which of those are, I'm not going to go hand you financial independence in a box. I'm going to just give you a piece of that puzzle. You put that puzzle piece there and you go to, you go to Eric's company and you snap that puzzle piece in. And before you know it, you got a reasonable puzzle, but you need to be the one to assemble it. You have to be the one to integrate those things and do the sweat in that. But what I love about what you've got there, Eric, is it's, it's, it's opening up things to people that didn't, they didn't realize they could do what it is you're talking about. So guys, Eric's company is called MB Capital Solutions, like Emma's and Mary B is in boy. MB Capital Solutions. And what I want you guys to do, everybody right now, go to mbcapitalsolutions.com forward slash DeRosa Group. Easy to remember, Eric's company name and then my company name, right? mbcapitalsolutions.com forward slash DeRosa Group, right? We got a question here coming from the audience. Okay, just so I'm clear, 0% for, for 12 to uh, 24 months. Does that zero end after the 24 month period or does it start at 0% with each transaction and every time I use it, you pay off the line of credit? Devin, bottom Devin, line, you need, to, you need to schedule a call with Eric to hear more about it and have him go into the granular detail. But Eric, give me like the quick, quick summary on how it works. I have an engineering background. I don't do anything quick. No, zero <laughs> percent um, will be twelve to twenty-four months, right at the end. So that's an initial promo, the introductory rate to get you to to apply. But then after that, some lenders, about 40, 50 percent of them, will just keep sending you promotions. Others, it'll go to normal APR. That's why when, you know when I talk about long term, you follow my lead, you follow my team's lead. We're going to show you how to use this unsecured line of credit somewhere between five and nine percent long term over and over again and keep it competitive when you're when you're doing it the right way but yes that initial zero percent will run out the key is some some lenders will keep sending them that's the real yeah. value at once Devin gets to the end of the line you're going to be refinancing in, in essence when when I if I were to borrow the money and I as I get to the the end of the 12-month period I would, in essence, refinance out of this loan with the introductory rate that's expiring. I would go ahead and take that. If I've got revolving debt there, I would take that, put it down and sign up for a new revolving debt line that would maybe replace whatever debt I have here and then would open me up for another 12 to 24 months. Is that correct? Maybe. But I'm, what I'm saying is the same 
the same lender you got the initial zero percent on yeah you're going to get zero percent over and over again from them oh they might re-up you with your with your help they might re-up you yeah now most most investors want even more access so let's say we come out of the gate we get someone eighty thousand dollars of zero percent money a year later they may come back or six months later man are there any other options right so we go after new lenders those yeah. old lenders don't go away so you still right. have those relationships and about 50 percent of those old lenders will keep sending you zero percent opportunities and that i mean that's how i built my portfolio and i'm talking about lenders that maybe started out with like a 15 twenty thousand dollar limit now up to 35 40 45 grand where you just get zero percent month after month and when you need to tap into it it's sitting there ready to go and yeah. It's a game changer for that, like you said, the liquidity yeah. side, and for those that just constantly find deals and they just can't, they can't do all of them because they don't have that yeah. access. Guys, this is the silver bullet. This is where I mean, where you guys hear everybody start complaining about interest rates being at 10, 11, 12 percent, not on a lot of things. This is the way to get access to maybe upwards of 100k at zero percent interest for a period of time. And that I should also say, it's not no cost, right? It's not like just Eric just sends you literally 100k in, of cash in a bag. You're going to need to borrow it. There's going to be a process. There are application fees to get through the journey and everything like that. But there's no, there, there's very little carrying cost for the money once you got it. William had a question. Do you have to have the LLC and the EIN for a certain period of time to qualify, aka to talk in lender talk, Eric? Is there seasoning for the LLC that, that William would need to have set up? The LLC needs to be created for at least one day, and then we can help you. There you go. If it's older than two years, we can help you get six figures plus 125 to 200K of access. Oop. I really look forward to hearing some success stories from the Duros Insiders community on your guys' ability to use Eric's line here. So one last question here. This And this came in from the community as well. Strategy-wise, should you have a deal in place before obtaining the credit line or should you move in on it? Should you do it before you have a deal or after you have a deal? What do you think, Eric? These questions are perfect. With lines of credit, you don't want to wait till you have a deal in place because you might have to close in two weeks. The lines of credit could take anywhere from two to three weeks to establish and get access to. I'd rather you have it a line of credit in place three months too early versus one day too late. So yep. you always want to get them in place. So if you need that gap funding ready to go, down payment money, Matt mentioned earnest money deposits, right? There's mm -hmm. a lot of the Gator lending going out there now. If you're not familiar with it, you can get some nice rates of return on it. You can use these lines of credit to Gator lend. And yeah, yeah it's, it's a Think game. Think about game. that. Yeah. Think about that. Like to, to pull money down and then throw it into the Gator community, right? I, I've heard people on Gator making double their money in quick form and fashion, right? So anyway, guys, hey, listen, this is super interesting. Let's continue the conversation with Eric Direct, right? Guys, go to uh, bcapitalsolutions.com forward slash DeRosa group to hear more about what he has to say. Take advantage of the of the discount that he has for DeRosa followers by using that link there. So Eric, this has been awesome. You are a uh, trusted partner of the DeRosa group. You, you were part of the pieces of the puzzle that Liz and I used in the early parts of our game to get ourselves to where we are. I'd love to have you back on. All right. Thanks, Matt. Appreciate it. Cool. Thanks for joining us, Eric. Guys, phenomenal conversation with Eric Moss from MB Capital Solutions. If you're not in if you're not tapping what already exists in your personal credit and being able to put that cash to work in your business, you're missing out, guys. Whether you're a seasoned investor or a brand new investor, there is a road for you to take your personal credit and unlock it to put to work in your business today, right now. For an LLC that's been in business for one day, you can do that. That's all the seasoning you need. So guys, go to mbcapitalsolutions.com forward slash DeRosa Group um, to learn more about how that works. Guys, I appreciate you guys watching this program. This has been the Cash Flow Digest. If you guys want to watch this program live and ask lots of questions and interface with our guests and ask me questions about all kinds of cool stuff like accessory dwelling units and all kinds of cool stuff, go to DeRosa Group uh, at DeRosa Insiders on Facebook. Facebook, DeRosa Insiders on Facebook. If you guys want to hear more about what we offer from a realm of passive investing or education products, go to DeRosaGroup.com. Thank you for watching, guys. As an, and as I always say on the YouTube channel, have a great and profitable week. Hey guys, Matt Fairclough here. Thank you for listening again to the Cash Flow Digest. I really appreciate you guys doing that. If you guys want to hear more about what DeRosa Group has to offer, go to DeRosa Group, D E R O S A Group.com, DeRosa Group.com online. You can hear about all the great things that we offer from an educational standpoint and passive investment standpoint on our website. See you there. And if you guys want to join our online community, DeRosa Insiders on Facebook, where you can watch this program get recorded every Friday at noon Eastern, and you can come on as even a guest or ask questions on the show. We hope to see you guys on our online community, DeRosa Insiders. See you there.